Hello everyone, uh, this is chapter 3 from the financial accounting course and chapter 3 is about the accounting cycle. So in the previous uh, two chapters, chapters 1 and 2, we introduced the economic role of accounting and we described and summarized the three main financial statements that uh, we prepare or produce as accountants. In this chapter, we will learn the uh, technical side of accounting and how to prepare uh, these financial statements from scratch. So, the accounting cycle basically has eight steps. So, the accounting cycle comprises eight steps. Out of which we will cover three steps in this chapter. Those three steps, the first one is called journalizing. And when we say journalizing, simply record transactions in or using the accounting language the accounting let me call it terminologies terminologies the second step is post to the accounts or the ledger we will see how this works in the third step, we will prepare a trial balance. Essentially, <clears throat> step one is the most important step, the journalizing. Steps two and three will follow naturally after step one. So if you get the journalizing of the entries properly, steps two and three are um, should be should be correct naturally and mechanically before i introduce this chapter or explain this chapter using uh, a comprehensive example that covers the three uh, steps i would like to introduce a couple of terms in accounting usually uh, in, in basic mathematics when we say we want to add or deduct we say minus and plus in accounting, we don't say minus and plus. We use other terms called debit and credit. Those debit and credit, when applied to uh, some uh, accounts, such as account receivable or notes payable, they have specific effects. So when we say that we are going to debit or, account, or, or credit assets, it's different from saying that we will go, we are going to debit or credit liabilities, for example. Any item under liabilities or owner's equity. So I'll replace it with OE just for brevity. Also, we know that under owner's equity, we have the item retained earnings, which has two components, revenues and expenses. Also, we know that net income uh, goes in two ways, either retained earnings or um, dividends. So we also have dividends. Okay, so these are the six items that comprise the whole accounting cycle. Uh, just let me remind you that net income, which is revenues minus expenses, if we are talking about uh, a service based company. Um, this net income goes in two ways, either retained earning, earnings or dividends. So we said in the previous uh, chapter that retained earnings is the link between the income statement and the balance sheet because retained earnings is added to owner's equity. So I'm just trying to motivate the inclusion of, of those items. Now. Apart from that, we know that 
actually we, we should uh, we should know that and keep in mind that when you debit assets you are basically increasing assets so again treat the terms debit and credit uh, as minus and plus the origin of the terms is is latin hundreds of years ago and there is no specific reason why we use the terms debit and credit um, and please disregard what you know about debit and credit in the banking operations because they are different when you deposit money in, in your bank account this, this deposit is a liability to the bank so it's a different concept forget about the debit and credit concepts you know from the debit card or the credit card all I want you to know is that assets increase in debit this is the only uh, case where I want you to memorize it and the rest of all of these will follow with logic let me show you how we know that assets is equal to liabilities plus owners equity if assets increase by debit how does it decrease of course by credit so if debit increases assets credit will decrease assets now if you go to the other hand side of the equality if you have an x here x minus y equals 2 for example okay if you take x to the other side it will be minus y is equal to minus x plus 2 so this x when it goes to the other hand side it will behave in a total opposite way right it's multiplied by minus so liabilities and owner's equity which are on the other hand side of the equality will behave in the total opposite way that assets behave so debit will decrease will cause a, re cause a reduction in liabilities and owner's equity and a credit will cause an increase by or in uh, liabilities and owner's equity by the mathematical logic by the simple computational logic now the question is if revenues increase what happens to owner's equity it will increase as well because net income would increase if revenues increase and therefore retained earnings will increase and eventually owner's equity will increase so you would expect revenues to behave in the same way that owner's equity behaves so revenues increase using the credit revenues will never be negative so there is no reduction in uh, revenues there is no negative number what if expenses increase what happens to owner's equity owner's equity decreases so expenses are expected to behave in the opposite way that owner's equity does so expenses would increase in the debit unlike owner's equity and also you will never have a negative expense finally dividends when dividends are higher retained earnings is lower and therefore owner's equity is lower so dividends are just like expenses they are not expenses they behave like expenses and increase in the, in the opposite way to uh, owner's equity and you will never have a negative dividends value so now technically speaking when you want to debit an account uh, it, it, you will be increasing it if it's an asset and decreasing it if it's a liability and owner's equity and the opposite when you credit an account you will be decreasing it if it's an asset and increasing it if it's a liability and owner's equity let me give you a, a very fast or simple example assume that you purchased you purchased a truck uh, on account when we say on account it means accounts payable right it's a liability and the truck is an asset it's a vehicle now we know that we need to increase our assets in terms of the truck of the vehicle at the same time now we are more liable so our accounts payable which is a liability is also increased so we need to debit assets by a vehicle or a truck and the credit liabilities by accounts payable it is a must and a rule that debits must be equal to 
uh, credits. So note debit must be equal to credit. Okay, the total of debits should be equal to the total of credits. Um, so here to do this, you will debit, we refer to debit as DR as if doctor and credit as CR. Okay, so DR vehicle truck assume that the value is ten thousand dollars and the credit accounts payable in accounting we place the first line as the debit if we want to move to the credit we go to a new line and indent we indent and then place the credit as an account payable ten thousand dollars as well when you become um, more familiar with the accounting language apparently actually um, eventually you, you wouldn't use this so whenever you see something like vehicle ten thousand dollars and accounts payable ten thousand dollars you will automatically know that there is a debit for assets as a vehicle and this vehicle wasn't uh, purchased in cash it was purchased on account so accounts payable went up now, we will take an example, a simple example, that comprises uh, six transactions, and we will see how we journalize the entries, and this, is, this step is called journalizing. This is how we journalize debit and credit. We will journalize the entries, we will post them in the accounts, and finally, we will, we will prepare a trial balance. The example says, On Jan 1, XYZ company is established by investing $50,000. On Jan 3, XYZ company purchased 10 laptops for 400 each, paid in cash. Jan 4, the company purchased a delivery car for $10,000, $6,000 paid in cash, and $4,000 will be paid later on. On Jan 10, the company sold 4 laptops on credit at their cost. On Jan 15, the company received $600 payment as a partial payment from this sale that took place on Jan 10. And on Jan 20, the company paid $2,000 as a partial settlement of its payables. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to um, solve or, or journalize those entries. So, step one. Journalize the entries. The first entry is on Jan 1. On Jan 1, the company is established by investing $50,000. So here the company was uh, established by investors who uh, deposited in, in the business $50,000. So the cash went up by $50,000 and the owner's equity increased by the same value. Owner's equity, keep this table in mind, owner's equity increases by credit and assets increases by debit. So I need to debit cash and credit capital stock in order to increase cash and capital stock. So here I'll have cash, the value is $50,000. And then capital stock, as you can see, I used a new line and indented. This indent means that I started the credit transactions. Capital stock, $50,000. I will use the dollar sign once at the beginning and the rest of the numbers will follow the same currency. On Jan 3, the company purchased 10 laptops for 400 each paid in cash. So Jan 3, the company purchased laptops and those laptops are uh, used for their main operations so this is an inventory those laptops are inventory the inventory value increases by the monetary value of the 10 laptops the monetary value of the 10 laptops is 400 multiplied by 10 so it's a four thousand dollars 
all paid in cash so i need to decrease my cash how do i decrease cash which is an asset by credit so i will go down use a new line and indent cash four thousand dollars okay jan 4 xyz purchased a delivery car for ten thousand dollars this delivery car was financed partially in cash and four thousand dollars later on so here i have three items that are changing i am adding to assets a car i am decreasing from assets six thousand in cash and i'm i am liable to the supplier of the car by four thousand dollars so the first thing i need to do is to start by them by order with them by order the first thing i need to add the car so vehicle which is a car the value of it is ten thousand dollars it's on the debit because i'm adding it to my assets so it increases by debit then i paid six thousand dollars in cash so my cash balance will decline by six thousand dollars so as you can see i started a new line and indented what about liabilities my accounts payable now increased by four thousand dollars liabilities increase by credit so on the credit as well i will have an account payable four thousand dollars okay so as you can see you can have more than one credit or more than one debit you just need to maintain the equality that the debits are the debit is equal to the credits on Jan 10, on Jan 10, uh, you sold four laptops on credit at their cost. So there is no uh, gain or loss. The four laptops that were sold are inventory. So your inventory balance will decline. So here you will have on the credit side, inventory, four laptops multiplied by 400. So this is a total of $1,600 or $1,600 you sold those four laptops on credit so you will receive the payment later on so this is an account receivable account receivable is an asset and it increases by uh, debit so account receivable $1,600 on Jan 15 you received $600 as a partial payment from this sale so your cash will go up and your account receivables will decline by six hundred dollars therefore i need to increase my assets in cash as with using the debit and decrease my assets as well using the credit in account receivables so cash increases by six hundred dollars and account receivable decreases by six hundred dollars so now i'm expecting less from the Customer, I'm only expecting 1000 which is 1600 minus the 600 a debit and a credit are just like a plus and a minus so the balance here is a debit and account receivable of $1,000 so I'm expecting from the customer only $1,000 the last transaction took place on Jan 20 uh, you pay $2,000 as a partial settlement of its uh, you paid as a company two thousand dollars as a partial settlement of your payables so here my cash is declining and my liabilities my accounts payable is declining as well how do i decrease liabilities i decrease it using the debit so i will place the accounts payable on the debit and the value here is two thousand dollars i paid this liability using cash so my assets decreased use in cash so credit assets as cash two thousand dollars okay this is we're done with the uh, economic transactions or journalizing the economic transaction in accounting language now we will move to step two in step two we need to post entries into the ledger or what we call a T account. Obviously from the name, a T account will have a shape of a T. This T has a debit on the left, always, a credit on the right, always, and a title. Each one of those items is one title. So cash is a title. Account receivable is a title. 
or an account. Inventory is an account. Um, vehicle is an account. What else? We have liabilities, we have accounts payable, and we have uh, capital stock. Okay, let's start with cash. I need to mention something before we do this, that those, um, those T accounts essentially summarize journalizing the entries. Now here in this example, we have only six transactions. In real life, you might have thousands, maybe millions of transactions in each economic, in each financial cycle. So you need a summary. You need to know in cash how much is left after all the operations are done. So cash, for example, you start with a debit of $50,000, always the debit on the left and the credit on the right. So $50,000. Then you paid, so we're done with cash. The other cash is 4,000 on the credit, so 4,000 on the credit. Then you have another credit uh, transaction for the cash, 6,000, so this is a 6,000. Then you have a 600 on the debit, this is a 600 on the debit, and finally a 2,000 on the um, credit for cash, and this way we will have a balance for cash that is equal to $38,600, which is basically the sum of these two minus the sum of these three. Naturally, all assets will have a balance on the debit side because they increase by debit, and all liabilities will have, um, liabilities and owner's equity will have a balance on the credit side. Let's see how. So, account receivables. We have a 1600 on the debit and a 600 on the credit. So the balance of account receivables is $1,000. Inventory, you first purchased $4,000 worth of inventory and then you sold 1600 out of them. So you still have in the warehouse a value of inventory that is equal to 2400 This is your balance. Uh, the vehicle, nothing has changed. We purchased it at $10,000 and it's still there. So the balance is $10,000. Accounts payable. Accounts payable. Uh, $4,000 in credit. Mind that here, you started with credit, which is the bigger value. And then you paid partially so you debited accounts payable uh, partially so this is a balance of a remaining balance of two thousand dollars as for capital stock in the first transaction that hasn't changed is fifty thousand dollars in credit so my balance in capital stock is fifty thousand dollars as you can see now each account has a total or a balance as I told you at the beginning of the lecture, when you get the first step right, steps two and three will follow. Essentially here we just summarized what we've done here. What matters is to get the debit and the credit correct and equal. Now, in the third step, what we need to do is to uh, summarize those the accounts into a trial balance. From the name, you can uh, deduce that it's a balance, something that has an equality. So in step three, the trial balance. The trial balance is very simple. You list all the accounts just by the order, as you mentioned them here. Cash, account receivable, inventory, Accounts, I'm oh, sorry, we have vehicles, vehicle, accounts payable, and capital stock. And then you have the debit transaction and credit transaction. The balance of cash is 38600 on the debit. So you will have it on the debit $38,600. 
Also, I mentioned the dollar sign once at the beginning, and the rest of the numbers follow the same currency. Account receivables, they have a balance of $1,000 on the debit. So $1,000. Inventory, a balance of $2,400 on the debit as well. So $2,400 on the debit. Vehicle, $10,000 on the, on the debit. So $10,000 on the debit. Accounts payable, a balance of $2,000. On the credit, so accounts payable on the credit, 2000 As you can see, I went to the credit column. $50,000 for capital stock, so $50,000 for capital stock. The sum of these numbers must be equal to the sum of these numbers. And as you can see, 10000 12400 13400 and 52000 So $52,000, 52000 $52, which are equal. The sum of the debits must be equal to the sum of the credits. And this way will be done uh, by the, the three uh, steps, the first three steps of the accounting cycle. Uh, before I uh, finish with this chapter, chapter three, I need to explain and introduce two concepts in accounting that are essential to preparing financial statements. One concept is concerned with revenues and the other concept is concerned with expenses. So the uh, concept or the principle that concerns revenues is called the realization principle. In the realization principle, the, re the realization principle essentially says all revenues are recorded or earned when goods are sold and services are rendered not when cash is received so when you make a sale or provide a service and you record it as an account receivable and not cash because you didn't get paid on the spot it is also considered an earned revenue and this will appear in the income statement so when you have in the income statement sales revenue minus cost of goods sold gross profit minus expenses you get net income this sales revenue it has two components the cash component and the receivables component. Those, the, the, the total of sales revenue is the sum of all goods and services that are sold or rendered respectively, and not the sum of cash received. Okay? So whenever you make a sale or provide a service, that's it. It's considered a sales revenue. You don't care if you receive cash or not. This is called the realization principle. You realize the revenue when the good is sold or the service is rendered. Um, okay, as for the matching principle, the other principle that has to do with uh, expenses. So the, the concept or the principle that concerns expenses is called the matching principle and the matching principle essentially says that all incurred expenses so you earn a revenue and incur an expense or incurred expenses should be matched 
to be revenue generating generating process let me give you an example to elaborate further the concept is simple any expense that you incur and include in the income statement must be matched to uh, a revenue that has been generated or realized example uh, you purchase or you purchased 10 laptops at uh, 400 dollars each on the first day of the uh, financial cycle okay at the end at the end of the financial cycle you were left with six laptops in the warehouse note that you did not have any other laptops any laptops other than other than uh, the 10 that you purchased you sold your laptops at an average price of six hundred dollars each the question is prepare an income statement you have two options option one and option two you can have sales revenue minus cost of goods sold and given that we don't have any uh, any other expenses uh, let me say that you will get net income all the way and option two you have sales revenue as well minus cost of goods sold and given that we don't have any expenses you will get net income okay uh, the first option is simply how, how many laptops did you sell you so if you were left with six at the end then you sold four you had ten you were left with six so you sold four four multiplied by six hundred on average then it's a two thousand four hundred dollars minus the cost of goods sold how much did the uh, goods cost me they costed me 10 multiplied by 400 so minus in accounting when we want to use a minus we place it within brackets minus four thousand dollars and therefore your net income is one thousand six hundred so this number over here is 10 laptops multiplied by uh, four multiplied by 400 sorry multiplied by 400 dollars this is a dollar the other option option two you can also have the same number of sold laptops four laptops multiplied by 600 dollars each minus the cost of goods sold which is the cost of the four laptops so you will have uh, 400 multiplied by four which is 1600 into brackets and therefore your net income in this case will be uh, $800 so this is a profit and this is a loss this 1600 is four laptops multiplied by $400 which one makes more sense 
obviously if you are selling at a price that exceeds the cost you should earn a, a profit you should generate a profit and therefore this one doesn't make any sense the mistake that we are making here is that we are including the 10 laptops that we initially purchased but this is not the cost of the goods sold the cost that of the goods that were sold is 4 multiplied by 400 dollars and therefore here we are, we are using the matching principle by matching the costs or expenses to the revenue so this is 4 multiplied by 600 dollars and this is 4 also multiplied by 400 dollars so the 4's are matched and in this way you are matching expenses and costs to the revenue generating process these two concepts the realization principle and the matching principle are essential for uh, coming chapters especially when we introduce accruals uh, in chapter 4 thank you so much and i'll see you in a new chapter